good morning all the next topic which we will be dealing in today's operating system class is related to mass storage structure and this mass storage structure will be covered in unit 5 as we all know what do you mean by this mass storage structure here so we generally go for performing operations on a computer right so when you want an operation to be performed on a computer you require the necessary data to be stored onto your system so when I go for storage system here, you can have either your primary memory where you can dump your data or you can go for your secondary storage. And here sometimes we call this secondary storage also as your backup or we call it as mass storage where you can store a huge amount of data. The first topic that will be dealt in this mass storage structure is about your magnetic disk. So magnetic disk is one of your mass storage structure where if you see the internal structure of this ma magnetic disk here, the disks are being divided into tracks. So you can see here the circular partitions which you have it around. These are known as your tracks. And when you see this track, track is again divided into parts and each part of a track we call it as a sector. And when you see all these tracks here or all this disk here, they are put up again one after the other. So again some radius. So this we call it as a cylinder. Now, when you see the structure of this magnetic disk, these are your disks which are being placed against some radius and you have tracks internally on this. You can call it as a cylinder or a disk and you have tracks and tracks are being divided into sectors. So, the data will be stored on this sector and to connect all these particular disks or you can call them as platers also. So, we can say that disk is divided into platers. Platers are being divided into each of your platers will contain a track and track in turn contains a sector. And on this particular sector, you actually store your data. But how you do you store your data here? We have an arm assembly here where you have a head here, which we call it as a read-write head. So data can be stored on both the surfaces of your plater or you call it as a cylinder or a disk here. So you have a separate read write head for the top surface as well as a separate read write head for the bottom surface and the data will be stored onto your sector. So each of these particular cylinder will be having its own. So the total thing, the total combination of all these disks, we call it as a cylinder. So each of these plater will be having its own read write head both on the top surface as well as your bottom surface. The main important components that we have to deal in your magnetic disk is what would be the disk access time. So disk access time is a summation of your seek time, rotation latency and your transfer time. Now when you're seeing this read write head, when you want to read the data from where you're reading the data from the sector. So seek time is nothing but the amount of time that is required for your read write head to be placed onto the track. So the amount of time required to move your read write head on the specified track is nothing but your seek time. The same time or the amount of time required for your read write head to place it onto the sector and where is a sector present in it is a part of your track. So time required to place a head on a sector is your rotation latency and transfer time is the amount of time that you require to take of the data. So put together some of all these things we call it as a disk access time. The next mass storage structure we'll go for seeing as an example here is your solid state drives. Nowadays in most of our laptops we are seeing that instead of your uh, hard disks we are getting SDD. So what is this SSD? It is nothing but solid state drive or you can call it as solid state disk which will also store the data but the technology used for storing the data will be different. It doesn't have any uh, tracks, it doesn't have any sectors or uh, no physical elements that are being present here. We'll be going for using flash memory to store the data. So when SSD is being present in a laptop, the weight of your laptop will be very less when compared to having a HDD on your laptops and they are of faster access. You can get the data in a less amount of time. Now the next mass storage structure what we see in this today's class is nothing but your magnetic tape as you might have already seen you have a tape here or we call it as a ribbon and on this ribbon using the magnetization process you can only store the data on one of the surface of the ribbon. So the data will be stored on this particular tape only on one surface 
unlike your magnetic disk where you will be storing the data on two sides of the surface whereas here i'll store it only on one surface the problem with is your magnetic tape is it is sequential access you cannot go for random access you have to access the data one after the other and this is basically used as your backup or a storage device where you want to just store the data now having seen the different types of mass storage structures here we actually see the disk structure so when you go for disk structure keep it in mind when you have a magnetic disk you have a plater plater has been divided into tracks and tracks are being divided into sectors so this is a basic organization and combination of your platers with a rate at a particular radius we call them as a cylinders so when you are internally storing this so this is a physical location of it right so when you have a physical thing here we already know you have to map your logical address with your physical address so logically on the disk we'll call them as blocks so we want a logical block to be mapped on to your cylinder or to your plater or to your disk so when you go for your hardware structure or the actual physical structure of the disk it is nothing but your cylinder number track number within the cylinder and sector number within the track so the logical block whatever we were dealing here so logical block has to be mapped with all these three components to actually get the data so when you go for this particular structure we have two variations of storing the data we call one as constant c stands for your constant constant linear velo velocity and cav here stands for constant angular velocity so when you just see this particular structure whether i go for this particular track or this track any of the track the number of sectors in the track are same so when you see the amount of data here here more amount of bits will be stored in the inner track whereas here the bits will be dispersed farther one after the other because the number of sectors are same whereas when i go for constant linear velocity you will be storing the data in a spiral form so as you are moving outside from the inner location to your outer location the amount of data you store in your outer block or outer track will be more when compared to the amount of data you are storing it on a inner block so same amount of data cannot be stored in inner and outer whereas here the number of since the number of sectors are same the amount of data stored will be same now coming to the next topic here disk attachment disk attachment is nothing but you know you have a system and you want all your secondary devices to be linked up with your this uh, uh, all the disks or when you go for your mass storage structure magnetic tape is to be connected to your system so how do you actually connect it to your system it is based on three architectures one is nothing but host attached storage network attached storage and here we have storage area network other we have is storage area network so when i go for the first one which is nothing but host based structure you just have a pc or a laptop to which we either connect a, a pen drive or a usb drive where you transfer the data from one system to the other system that is the reason we call it as host so for the pc attached so you are attaching a pen drive so the data will be transferred from this device to your other device so here in disk attachment we generally deal how your secondary storage devices are been connected to your system next when we go for network attached storage here in network attached storage you have a network whether it is lan or wan and you have a network attached storage where the total data will be stored so it acts as a file server this will be acting as a file server and all the systems which are connected in that particular network can access the data from this particular file server we have another variation of this disk attachment where it is storage area network in storage area network you have n number of servers so more than one particular devices or your network attached storage can be combined so here you have your network attached storage as well as your storage area network where the multiple mass storages can be combined together so here the same architecture you have your client you can access the data from the server and this uh, this storage area network will acts as a shared repository so if you want the data you can take from any of the storage uh, a array and provide it back to your client so it is a combination of the networks whereas here it is a single network which we are talking about so 
now uh, this is about your disk attachment we'll be seeing about disk scheduling algorithms in the next class